I think for me, I started entirely in the arts, and then I learned technology by wanting to combine different arts. So I got interested, of course, first in music, and then I said, how can I work with motion? How can I work with dance? How could I work with um, visual arts? And in order to tether those things together, I needed to learn technology. And so that's how I learned programming. Hi, I'm Eli Stein. I'm a composer, media artist, and software engineer. And I've done a variety of different things related to music technology, multimedia, and collaboration over the past decade or so. The biggest part of my musical and artistic journey comes from my father. He taught me at a super early age how to read music, how to perform. And then I found a laptop when I was probably in my teens. And that just totally shifted how I thought about music and how I thought about sound and creativity. I, I think early on I was just working with synthesizers and kind of playing around as many people do with stock sound libraries and then expanding out from there and kind of thinking about what if you do your own recording, what if you build your own effects and kind of what happens if you expand outwards from that. So the last piece that I worked on was a piece uh, called Where Water Meets Memory, which is this piece for multi-channel loudspeaker array. It's a work that explores four different parts of my life and also four different relationships to water that I have. Of fear, which is something called thalassophobia, of memories as a child, kind of going to the beach and experiencing that, and then other kind of more fantastical uh, engagements with, with water and the rain and the deep ocean, these things. The goal with that piece was to really craft a four movement composition that focused on the loudspeaker system as this kind of performance medium. I, I think a lot of my work focuses on natural processes and in particular how to get computers to kind of express those or emulate those or even kind of imagine new uh, natural processes. A lot of that actually comes not from musical uh, inspirations, but from uh, generative digital artists. Another is definitely very firmly in this French-English acousmatic music tradition, which multi-channel speaker arrays are kind of always part of that. The environments that you can make sonically with more than two speakers are just at a different aesthetic and kind of sensual level. So for me, I'm always reaching for multi-channel speaker arrays or other kind of immersive experiences that allow you to have a sense of sound being around you. I think that if you are considering the computer as an instrument, which it is for so many music makers, then just like instruments like the violin, as the technology changes, you get different musics, you get different performance styles and different contexts within which that instrument can exist. In particular, within the past five years, these very dense artificial neural networks or these huge data set models, such as uh, Google's Music LM, allow for the computer to do different things musically. So I'm super excited to see how that evolves and how composers, performers are gonna be working with that in the near future. The work that is being done on the fringes and being done in an experimental context historically has always come to be a part of the mainstream, often decades later.